Hello, Bearded B and Astronomy folks. Um, I am super, super excited. I am alone. Katie is out Black Friday shopping with family, which is a Black Friday Thanksgiving ritual for her and a bunch of her family members and our family members, I guess, because we're married. But so. I'm alone, and I have some new equipment, and I have nobody to geek out about it too. So, you will be the source of that. So, uh, I got a new camera, a new dedicated astronomy camera that uh, essentially has a DSLR chip, um, at least the same size as a DSLR. Here, let me turn down the hockey game. I was watching the Red Wings as well. Okay, so it has a DSLR-sized chip in it, the, the imaging sensor. Uh, it's extremely sensitive, uh, meaning it takes very little light to kind of show up as data on the sensor. So it's perfect for astrophotography. And what else makes it perfect for astrophotography is it is a cooled camera, so I can use some fancy software to cool the chip down to, you know, 40 degrees below uh, Celsius, below zero. Um, so super, super cold. And what that offers is a noise-free image, um, you know, because heat is sometimes registered as data on the sensor. And so that shows up as noise, which messes with the clarity and, and the, um, you know, resolution overall uh, wow factor of the image. And it requires a bunch of extra steps in post-processing and, uh, or extra steps in the image uh, uh, sequence by, you know, doing flats and darks and bias frames and all those calibration things that can kind of take care of some of that noise issue but the heat noise is really unpredictable and therefore kind of difficult to deal with so the only real way to deal with it is to cool the sensor down and that's what this camera does and that is why it's you know got the wires and all that going to it well that and data transfer um so i'm super excited about it I've, i i'm obviously inside now because it is freezing cold windy and cloudy as heck so i will not be going outside tonight but what i'm excited about other than just the new camera that i have yet to take a picture with is uh connecting my computer uh to my telescope mount it was kind of something that i was <sighs> timid of uh, because there was a lot to learn um, about the mount and a lot to learn about the telescope and a lot to learn about that telescope and that camera and that camera and all this stuff that was almost on the verge of being overwhelming and um, so I didn't want to add any extra complexity to it so I didn't go right away into the EQMod world and EQMod is a uh, series of computer programs that allows for direct connection and direct uh, control of uh, EQ mod or, or of an ASCOM compatible mount um, through a computer with a regular planetarium software that I already use a lot for you know just general research and curiosity and then also for planning um, imaging sessions and so the the program I'm talking about is Stellarium uh, I highly suggest, whether you have a, a telescope or not, that you go out and get Stellarium, because it will show you exactly what is up in the night sky. If you're curious what you're looking at, Stellarium is a great resource to figuring that out, and it's a great resource to figuring out what you should uh, be looking for and looking at, um, and kind of, you know, really uh, pique your interest in a lot of different areas and the different things you're looking at, and it'll give you some information about them. So, uh, there is this EQ mod uh, program and series of programs that allows for compatible amounts to be con controlled by, you know, a program like Stellarium. And this is a compatible mount. It wasn't necessarily something that I thought I must have 
when I was looking for an Equatorial mount. I just wanted a good one that was in, within a, a reasonable price range, and that's why I chose the Orion Atlas. So that just so happens to be EQMod compatible, and we will um, check that out here in just a second. So this is Stellarium. Uh, like I said, a very, very cool and useful uh, program, regardless of whether you're an astrophotographer or not. And I don't want to slew very far away from this general area, because I'm in the corner of a room. Um, but I will show you, because I'm super excited about this. We'll check that star out, and so we'll hit Control-1. And it slews to it, and it says that that's where it's at. Of course, I have no, I mean, it's probably not pointed exactly where that uh, star actually is, but, um, you know, I didn't go through any polar alignment or, or star alignment on the mount, because once again, I'm inside, so that would have been useless. Regardless, uh, that is neat, and I will have to figure out some more aspects of it, uh, and in particular, the sync property and how to add data points, because, um, you know, part of setting up a mount like this is doing <clears throat> a star alignment after you're polar aligned, and I, I guess I'll do videos on all these things in the future, but, um... Adding a star alignment when you're using the hand controller, uh, you know, you select a star that you know or that you, you know, can see in Stellarium and find in the sky, and the mount will slew to where it thinks it is, and then you correct it based on what you actually see through an eyepiece or through a camera, and the mount kind of infers uh, its error and, and, and corrects uh, its you know, thinking of where it's pointed, and then you do that on another star, and maybe even uh, another one, because uh, you can do one, two, or, or three star alignments. So, uh, that being said, I don't have it connected to the hand controller right now. It is in PC direct mode. So, uh, the process of doing the star alignment is uh, one where you essentially slew to a star, uh, and then once again, like I said, had said, you correct, uh, you know, its actuality uh, to what the computer thinks, and the computer figures out the precise location. So, I don't necessarily know how to do that. I will have to uh, learn about that, and I'm sure there's a lot of other things that I'll have to learn about as well. So that is EQMod and Stellarium, and I am super excited about that. Let's go back to Polaris Control 1. And so once again, um, you guys had talked about what kind of equipment I have. This is an Orion Atlas. Uh, you know, the same exact uh, thing is a Skywatcher HEQ6. Um, and then this is an Explore Scientific Essential Series ED80 triplet apochromatic refractor. And connected back here is the ZWO ASI 071 MC Pro astrophotography camera. That is a lot of letters and numbers, but uh, I'm excited about that piece of equipment right there. And then connected up here is the Orion Starshoot Auto Guider. And right there is the William Optics 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter guide scope that is uh, actually no longer uh, in production. It's a nice little guide scope that I got um, on Cloudy Nights, which is another resource that I highly, highly suggest if you're interested in this sort of thing. I just got uh, tons of forums and classifieds and a lot of really, really awesome information. So, yeah, check it out.
So another thing that I'm going to have to think about over the next little while is cable management because in addition to the cables you see here there will be uh, do controllers. I at least have the one um, for the main imaging scope. So it's a couple more wires and I'm trying not to have them add extra weight to the back end of the imaging train here. So I'm going to have to figure something out and connect them to the mount somehow. That is part of why I love this hobby. Nothing is uh, perfect out of the box. You have to figure it out and engineer it. So I will uh, keep you updated on that. So if you guys are interested in this, and I'm sure you are if you're you know, with me at this point in the video, uh, I appreciate you watching. You know, I, I hope to kind of gain uh, a more astronomy and astrophotography and science-minded crowd uh, in addition to the beekeeping stuff because there will always be beekeeping stuff on BKBs. But uh, I appreciate you guys watching on this stuff because this greatly interests me as well. So shoot me your questions if you've got any. Otherwise, get out there and look up if it's not too cloudy and cold and windy and crappy. Thanks for watching. See ya.